Hey guys, it's Carissa here and welcome back to my YouTube channel Inky Fairy Designs. Today is Monday and that means mixed media. I want to first off apologize for missing last week's video. Um, it, I just got very overwhelmed and um, was not going to get the video up in any sort of time <laughs> and just decided to push it back a week and now I have a few videos that I have on hold that I can hopefully keep them coming consistently now. Um, you know, I love doing the videos. I love creating the projects. Editing is um, not my favorite part of this whole thing, but reading your comments and seeing your support, that is definitely my favorite part. So I'm gonna try to keep them coming and especially the mixed media ones, you guys really, really enjoy those. So, got that out of the way. I want to tell you what we're doing today. I am creating some watercolor backgrounds using the gel press and some Distress Oxide inks. Now, I got this idea when I was doing a bunch of uh, printing when I first got this and I actually watered down some acrylic paints and got like a really cool watercolor effect. And so I thought I wanted to try it with the Distress Oxide. So that's what I'm doing. I picked out like three colors, uh, fossilized amber, picked raspberry and peacock feathers, and then I pulled in um, some abandoned coral with that picked raspberry, kind of blended those together. Now something that I learned during the session that I will probably do in a future, um, you know, when I do this again, is I will mix those um, better or maybe possibly even pick up some of the reinkers and use the reinkers on the gel press because you can see that a lot of the times when I just kind of squish the um, ink pad on the gel press, it leaves that sort of square, um, look behind it doesn't really uh, move it around that much now um, you know I could move it around better or overlap more like I did with the blue here and then I'm picking that up and there I was able to get less of that kind of square look so there's just just play around with it move the colors around the other thing I wanted to say is that my gel press is dirty I didn't bother cleaning it up from a previous paint session and it didn't affect the way that I was able to get this watercolor look at all it actually added to a little bit of the texture that I was getting and I really really like that I loved working with the Distress Oxides in particular for this um, technique because they don't blend into each other. Um, so if my paper was a little bit wet and I added a different color on top, I would still be able to see very clearly, you know, the colors underneath. You can see it with that blue. You can still see those pinks and greens and all of those other colors. So really cool technique here. I was just trying to add some clean water to it to get kind of like those splotchy looks that you get with the Distress Oxides, you know, it reacts with water. So, um, but it didn't really do it too much. I don't know if maybe I had watered it down already so much that it still, it just wasn't giving me that. But I, once I splattered um, some water directly to the panels, instead of doing it on the gel press, I was able to get a bit more of that texture you can see. So I did dry um, in between. I don't know if you saw that, um, but I did dry my panels in between each layer and uh, just use like uh, my heat tool. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add some um, darker paint here with uh, through a stencil. This is the wallpaper stencil by Dina Wakely Media. And I love that medieval paint. It's like a metallic, um, kind of like a pewter color. I love it. And so I just adding a little bit of that texture onto um, my sheets. Now my panel, I, I forgot to mention that I am working on watercolor paper. This is the Fabriano uh, Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. And I did that for a reason because I'm creating ATCs, um, otherwise known as artist trading cards out of these backgrounds that I'm making. So I wanted to uh, make sure I had like a very um, heavy duty uh, cardstock or paper that I was working on and I could have done this on cardstock but since I was going to be using a lot of wet media with the distress oxides and a lot of wet uh, water I felt that um, I should probably go ahead and do it on the watercolor paper 
and it turns out so pretty. I was really happy with like the first print and then you saw I would go in and get that ghost print on the second sheet. But um, they both ended up turning out so pretty. And here I'm going to kind of brighten them up a little bit. This is what I like to do when things get a little bit busy or um, I'm feeling like I need to bring in some more white areas to it. So I just added a whole layer of white paint. This is the uh, white Dina Wakely Media acrylic paint. And then I took out some texture stamps and put those all over. And now I'm going to lay a open stencil so this has a lot of open areas so I'll still be able to see the texture through those and then I'm just you know lightly pouncing in a few areas on both of the sheets that I have here and it's just going to um, brighten it up a little bit add a little bit of break up a little bit of that color and, and texture that I had going on and I'm really happy with the way that they look so now um, I'm going to add a little bit more stamping. So I'm done with the gel press. Um, my papers are totally dry. I'm going to bring in this text stamp and I'm going to use these cute little um, archival inks. I finally got them. They're so tiny and so perfect for this because I don't need a huge ink pad because um, I'm only using them, you know, very randomly and so I just stamp up a little bit of the uh, or I just put a little bit of ink on the stamp and then I just go around and um, add some of that texture I love adding text book text to my pieces now I'm adding a little bit more stamping with some archival ink in black so I wanted to bring in some more of that contrast and this is just the stars from I think the scribbly faces uh, stamp set and now I'm going to do a little bit of doodling around those stars with this white uh, paint pen. And then I'm going to also show you that's the color Majestic Violet of the acrylic ink that I used for the text stamping. I forgot to show you that earlier. So I'm just going to do some random doodling here. I'm basically just outlining all of the stars that I stamped. And um, yeah, the reason that I cut the papers down to the size that I cut them down was to so that it would fit the entire um, space of the gel press which is like I think the one I used is like the five and a half by eleven size and then I, it made it easy so that I could cut down the panels to the artist trading cards oh look I have a little helper <laughs> so you see um, it just made it a lot easier and, um, you know, the little hands that come in and little shadows over there, you can see that a lot of times I'm filming these with my kids in the room. That way I can hang out with them and then later on when they're in bed or early in the morning, I can do the voiceovers and they're really good if they're awake and I'm doing the voiceovers to keep it quiet and they know not to run around and it's just awesome and they love to watch me film and see what I'm making and they also uh, keep me on track because they're like did you make your mix media Monday video or your Wednesday watercolor video um, they keep me um, inspired and going so love them for that and I um, right here I'm just cutting down my um, papers to the ATC size which I think is like two and a half by three and a half so it's a really tiny size that's why I like to work on the big panel and then cut it down once I'm ready to kind of do more of the detail work so before I added any of the doodles that I wanted to do I wanted to get it down to the size that I wanted and then I cut out the um, white cardstock so the white cardstock is actually the ATC size which is two and a half by three and a half and then I just cut out my little uh, panel my background panels slightly smaller so there'd be like a little border and I did that um, because I wanted to cover up all the messy on the back side um, to keep it nice and clean and um, I liked it just gave it kind of like a finish a more finished look so here I am with that white paint pen again I really do like this Posca or Posca pen it's kind of my favorite it stays bright white on um, any of the layers that I have underneath and I just really like creating these little stars right now so on almost everything that I'm making I will add these little stars to it 
And um, so I just kind of, there's like, I don't know how many, I, I know I created seven for the swap. I'm actually doing this, uh, I did this for a swap um, for a uh, Facebook group, and then I had a bunch left over, so I think I had five extra left over. So I'm just uh, laying them all out, and then I wanted to add some black splatters. That's kind of one of my favorite things to do, is add that contrasting black splatter with some spray ink. Then I'm going to go in and outline um, or edge the uh, outsides of all of the panels with my uh, archival ink in black soot. Um, I love this. I created my own uh, archival ink in that color just to have because I really like the crispness and everything. And I, and I like that it's archival. So now I'm going uh, through and picking out kind of my favorites. And I'm going to mount them on the white cardstock like I mentioned. The white cardstock is the size of the ATC uh, 2.5 by 3.5. And, and then my panels are just slightly smaller um, by about a quarter of an inch um, to create that border. And I'll go in and just do that with all of them. And then I also um, created seven for the swap all in white. And then I had the extras um, I did uh, mount them on black cardstock. I wanted to see, I liked, I couldn't decide. And I, I like the, um, I like them both actually. So I'm going to finish off um, the ATCs with these letter stickers by Tim Holtz. It's from the Small Talk collection, and I just love these. You guys know I use them on my journal pages all the time, and uh, I thought they would be perfect on these cards. Besides, there's so many in that sticker pack that I've had it for years, and I have not even barely touched the surface of them. So it was actually a really great way to kind of use some of them up. So I put um, the black because it comes with like um, a whole set of words and phrases and quotes in white and black. And so I put the black ones on the white border, the white cardstock that I did. And then I did the white stickers on the black um, outline cardstock that I have. So I just think that that kind of um, black and white contrast uh, really uh, made those words stand out on all of the backgrounds. And so I'm picking out kind of some very positive, inspirational ones because I want whoever gets these um, to uh, enjoy it and maybe put it on their desk or have it um, on their refrigerator or something just to where they can be inspired and encouraged by some of the words that are on there. And I think, you know, whoever gets whatever word or quote or whatever, it's going to be something that, you know, was meant for them. Even though it was totally random for me, I think whoever gets it, it's going to be totally uh, meant for them at least that's my hope so I love these I love the way that the white stands out against that black border I love one of my favorite ones is be you bravely um, that one actually speaks a lot to me and then this one also stronger than yesterday um, you know it's a struggle life is a struggle but every day we get up and do it again we are stronger than we were yesterday so the final thing that I'm going to do is bring in this Stabilo um, all-purpose pencil and I'm going to outline um, or do some shading on the uh, cards or on the stickers just to kind of make them stand out a little bit and um, you know bring them into part of that background so what I do is I just outline like the bottom and the right sides of each of them and then I will go in with a water brush and activate that because it is water activated and pull out some of that shading so it'll just bring a nice little bit of shading around that sticker and around that quote and then um, you can really see that it just stands out a lot better. See, once I do that, I'm just like so happy. I love when it just kind of starts to flow uh, and it just kind of pops out of that card. So I do that for all of them. And um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I did add a layer of multi-matte medium 
on top of all of the sticker words just so that they would stay put and not come off. Um, I like to do that. I know they're sticky, but when you have tons of layers and paints and um, just all of that going on in the background, I think it's just a good idea to add some type of multi matte medium on top. So here they all are. That about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I loved creating these ATCs. It's a great way to just do some quick, fast art and to send out a little piece of yourself to some friends. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for continuing to watch and like and share these videos. It really encourages and inspires me to continue to make more content for you guys. And be sure to like this video uh, by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love it if you'd become a subscriber. I have a little bit of everything for everybody. I have Mixed Media Mondays today, and I have watercolor on Wednesdays, and then I have my card making videos on Saturdays. So I think um, that kind of touches everything that I love. And I hope you get, um, I hope you enjoy the variety that you get here. You can pretty much find me on social media as Inky Fairy Designs anywhere. And then also be sure to check out my Facebook group in the description box below. There you can find inspiration from other people and share what you've created inspired by these videos here. Um, I will be back on Wednesday for another Watercolor Wednesday video. Until then, do something creative today. Bye.